My name is Alan Prost, and I'm going to describe for you how to recognize a problem with back extrapolated volume when doing a forced vital capacity on the HD PFT 4000 PFT machine. Now, what this looks like with your test subject is they take a big breath in and they're going to expire or blow all the breath out very quickly. And what the back extrapolated volume is, is a delay or a um, hesitation on the part of the patient. So they take a big breath in. And then when they go to blow it, they go, and so they have that little bit of a delay on the exhalation. And that back extrapolated volume causes a, causes an error in the machine that it wrongly interprets um, how much breath they could blow out in that one second if there's a delay. So we're trying to remove the possibility of that delay, and we want to get a, um, a very accurate one-second forced expiratory volume. So I'll show you what that looks like. So this is the view you have um, in the patient screen on the HD PFT 4000. Now, when you're coaching a patient to take a breath to do the test, they're going to start off with inspiration, exhalation, inspiration, exhalation down in here. We're going to get them to take a big breath in and then blow it out, 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 keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing, and then big breath in. Okay. And over here is what I want to look at for the um, looking at the back extrapolated volume. So as they're inspiring, they take a big breath in, big breath in, big breath in, big breath in, and then blow it out, 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 blow it out. All right. So that's what we're going to see on this screen. Now, the American Thoracic Society gives us good detailed descriptions of what makes an acceptable and usable criteria for each forced vital capacity. And you can see here, we're focusing right now on the back extrapolated volume must be less than 5% of the force vital capacity or 100 mils, whichever is greater. So when we look at the tabulated results of this test subject's tests, we look across the extrapolated volume, and that's our back extrapolated volume. The computer calculates that for us. We can see on the first test, it was 80 mils, second test, 90 mils, third test, 100 mils, and the fourth test, it was 90 mils. Now that certainly meets our ATS criteria, but the ATS criteria also states that it can be less than or equal to 5% of the forced vital capacity. So in this case, the patient's got a vital capacity of about 5 liters, so their acceptable back extrapolated volume would be about 250 mils. So we're certainly much lower than that for this test subject. So that means it's not a problem for this particular test subject. So what I want to do is zoom into this little view right here, which you can do by using the cursor on the HD PFT 4000. So once zoomed in, you can see here, we're going to see the, as the patient takes a big breath in, 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 thing, and then blows it out. All right. So this is inspiration. And this upward part here is exhalation just to get you orientated to the graph. And remember, over on this side, we have volumes and we have time here, okay? So what it looks like here, we have a very low back extrapolated volume. So I'm gonna draw for you um, a couple of examples of how this is measured by the um, computer. The question arises, what would it look like if a patient had poor back extrapolated volume or had a problem or a delay with exhalation? So here we see the patient's breathing in, breathing in. So we have inspiration coming down here and taking a big breath in, big breath in. And then they're slowly allowing some of the volume to go out before they blast out their exhalation. All right. So just to orientate us again, this is inspiration and this is exhalation occurring here. All right. And the way the machine is looking at uh, the computer um, analyzes back extrapolated volume is it looks at our total amount of volume taken in. So it draws a little line right across here, just like that. And then what it does is it says, okay, what's our peak flow? All right, so we can take a line here and I'm gonna draw that one in red. So that line represents our peak expiratory flow. And then just to tabulate what the back extrapolated volume is, it takes an angle right 90 degrees off of that, shown right here. And it's this volume, remember on this side of this screen, this is volume. So this line in here represents the back extrapolated volume, 
All right. So that's what the computer is doing. It just draws a little line here at 90 degrees and extrapolates how much volume is lost. So in this case, that's a little bit higher back extrapolated volume than um, I'll show you in another case. I'll show you another example of a patient who's taking a big breath in, big breath in, big breath in, big breath in, then take a big breath in, and then they're just slowly holding it, and then they allow some little drift, and they're hesitating to exhale, and then they blast the air out like this, all right? So remember, this is inspiration, that's exhalation out here, and what the computer does is it tries to measure what the peak expiratory flow would be, all right? So I'm going to draw that in this with this red line. It measures what the peak volume that the patient took in, which I'll show you here in this with this green line. All right. And then what it does is it extrapolates what the lost volume is because they had this hesitation or this loss of volume because they didn't exhale quickly. All right. So I'll draw that again in this light blue line in here. All right. And that equates to a specific volume. And that volume is considered the back extrapolated volume. And that's the volume that's been lost because they hesitated or they allow it to blow out slowly instead of just blasting it out very quickly. All right. And our ATS criteria is very clear that it means to be less than uh, 100 mils or 5% of the total forced vital capacity of the test subject.